like I said, distributed network function virtualization, so something in the NFE telco space. And uh, my name is Rima Yontel. I am a senior architect at Red Hat. And uh, here, yep. no, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm uh, Fred Oliveira from uh, Verizon. And uh, hey, uh, I'm Sharad Kumar. I'm from Big Switch Networks. I'm the software engineer over there. All right. Uh, so we're going to talk about what distributed NFE is, why we are looking at it, why it's of special interest to telcos. And then we're going to uh, talk about some of the lab work that uh, Big Switch had done in their labs to implement uh, distributed NFE to verify its feasibility um, for deployment. So first of all, what is distributed NFE? Um, what do we mean by distributed? And the main thing here is it's distributed geographically. So what happens is you have your control plane, uh, the majority of your control functionality centered in your core data center. That's where you would have your OpenStack controllers uh, and a lot of other things. And then uh, across the WAN in remote locations, you place only your computes. So in OpenStack, uh, your uh, Nova compute will go in the remote side. Basically, that minimizes the footprint that you have at the remote side and centers all the brain power of your network in one core data center so it makes it easier to manage. Um, it's applicable in many different cases in telcos um, and for enterprises, for res residential uh, applications, uh, putting applications in remote points of presence, for a mobile age computing, etc., And I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on actual use cases. So um, which components go where, right? You have your core data center. And like I said, that's where you put the majority of the brain of the operation. So you have uh, OpenStack controllers, uh, probably the bulk uh, of uh, your, some of your storage. Uh, and some of the storage will also go in the remote sites. Uh, you will have your network controllers. So how you control the network both in the data center and across the WAN and at the remote sites. So you control, most of the control is centered as well. Um, you have your cloud controllers, your orchestration, your uh, deployment tools, uh, so how you deploy the application in the remote side, you can also do it remotely from your central location, as well as your monitoring, troubleshooting, analytical tools, and um, some of the applications, the ones that you don't want to place at the edge or the ones that don't need to be close to the end consumer, you can place them also in the central side. So basically, that makes it much easier for you to have that uniform, homogeneous environment in your core data center that uh, you know, can be managed uh, uniformly, that can be easily controlled. And uh, only the remote sites where you place your compute nodes with the edge applications are the ones that need to be distributed and the ones that might require actual truck rolls in the telco speak. So basically, sending somebody in a truck to take care of the uh, equipment of the application, but the application itself is managed and controlled from the central side. So you minimize your hardware footprint at the edges. And uh, specific use cases uh, in a generic way, because Fred is going to address the actual Verizon use cases, but in a generic way where we're seeing uh, applicability of distributed NFE is uh, for virtual uh, CPE deployments, and that can be specifically thick CPE, so a type of virtual CPE where you actually run uh, virtualized components on the remote uh, CPE device, which is in this case would be an x86 type of server uh, device. So you can have enterprise or residential version of them, uh, enterprise can be a bit more involved, and you can have uh, various VNFs running on uh, that CPE, you know, firewall, um, load balancer, uh, when optimization, security applications, uh, like deep packet inspection, um, 
you can terminate your uh, VPN, IPsec VPN on the device, uh, your uh, network address trans translation, etc. And you can also have some storage um, on the device, and as well as you can run, you know, like a web server or your VoIP uh, telephony uh, application on that as well. And then uh, the bulk of it is going to be in the central data center where you can have your uh, access control, your policies, um, you know, your etc. control from it, and just configure the edge device um, in the net, you know, for stuff that you want to be close to the customer. Uh, for the residential, it's a much simpler CP, but it's very similar in the concept of it. So basically, you will have fewer um, CPU cores on it, maybe less RAM, you know, just a much simpler and a cheaper device, but it still would be running things you normally run uh, at home on your current, like, uh, router, you know, net, firewall, uh, parental control applications, etc. Um, also, remote pop is where you would put your video cache for CDNs, for instance, to make it so you don't have to backhaul your video across your whole network. You want to put it as close to the edge as possible. Um, uh, web cache as well. And another application is mobile edge computing, which is a uh, you know, big uh, topic right now. Uh, Telcos giving access to the developers to put their uh, applications very close to the mobile user, for instance, for uh, things like augmented reality or virtual reality, things that require very low latency and have high bandwidth, so you also don't want to backhaul it all the way to the center of your network. Uh, so that's another application where you would see um, applicability of distributed NFE. And uh, when you deploy something at the mobile edge, you want the footprint to be as little as possible, and you don't want to waste your space for your controllers, etc. And uh, here, Fred is going to talk specifically about the Verizon use case and why they, as a tier one uh, telco, are interested in this type of uh, architecture. Hello. Uh, so uh, I think Verizon is uh, for the people. We have kind of a need for all the uh, use cases that uh, Rima talked about. Uh, but basically, we're trying to roll out new services uh, over time and uh, of all the different flavors, uh, moving them from um, a centralized environment uh, and distributing them potentially all the way out to a, a residential home. Uh, the uh, certainly CPE use case is one of the largest ones that uh, we see. But uh, uh, again, some of the new uh, uh, Applications that are coming up, uh, virtual reality, uh, augmented reality, are one of those areas that uh, require much lower latency, uh, much uh, closer processing uh, to the consumer to get the uh, kind of functionality. Uh, bandwidth is tends to be uh, our one of our highest cost functions, uh, and uh, what we want to do is kind of limit the amount of bandwidth, do as much caching as we can, as close to the consumer as we, we can possibly get. Uh, just uh, the whole and view that we're at Tennessee is that there's going to be hundreds, uh, potentially tens of thousands uh, of these uh, remote sites um, out there. How do we manage all of these things? How do we distribute functions to these things? How do we uh, deploy applications across this, both in a, uh, within a single unit uh, or in a uh, kind of a more mono, uh, distributed uh, VNF, where there's uh, different components might actually be running uh, in the central site uh, versus in the uh, distributed edge. Uh, again, the goal for all these is to uh, improve the customer experience, uh, provide newer services, on-demand services. Uh, as a uh, consumer needs a, uh, a caching function or uh, another firewall, parental control, all those things, uh, all the VNF could be downloaded uh, dynamically as they uh, need it, uh, and then we would uh, deploy that at a time. Um, again, from a, cons uh, a telco perspective, reliability and availability are one of our key concerns. Uh, by providing uh, the compute nodes at the edges, uh, it reduces the amount of, uh, uh, and keeping the control nodes uh, at a more centralized location, we can provide 
uh, a higher level of redundancy, a higher level of reliability uh, from the control plane perspective, uh, whereas uh, an impact of a, uh, a local site failure only impacts the local uh, site, doesn't impact the rest of the environment. Uh, at the same time, we're having a uh, relatively low cost uh, solution for this. Um, forward, look back, or this way. Uh, so this, this is kind of the, the standard scenario. Um, we have uh, all the cases, uh, uh, wireless scenarios, uh, Fios for uh, some uh, caching, uh, video uh, deployment of um, uh, internet services, uh, the SMB uh, environment where you might have a, uh, a Dunkin' Donuts or something that is sitting out at the edge uh, that wants to have a, uh, a local processing function uh, in there. Uh, and this might be just a, a firewall or uh, a load balancing or uh, function that's local. Uh, and then a larger enterprise that might actually have a, um, a deployed, a, a fairly thick CP, multiple uh, nodes in there that you can deploy actual um, uh, scalable functions in that location. Uh, what we'd like to do is, again, distribute the uh, VNFs uh, across this whole hierarchy. Uh, some of the VNFs might run uh, at the centralized, more centralized site, uh, and then all the uh, uh, VNFs that are specifically latency sensitive or uh, bandwidth sensitive would run uh, as close to the consumer uh, as possible. Um, so one of the things we uh, again uh, talk about is uh, that uh, historical context says that the uh, uh, the cost of compute, uh, the cost of storage is decreasing at a much faster rate uh, than the cost of our transport. Uh, and so this pushes us towards having uh, as edge computing as much as possible uh, and doing, uh, limiting the amount of bandwidth that we have to backhaul uh, to a central site. And so we, we see this as a, a continual trend that uh, uh, the computing power will move closer and closer to the edge uh, and that uh, by doing that, uh, the number of compute sites will grow, again, potentially to thousands. Uh, so our goal is basically dynamic control, uh, deploy services to the right locations, uh, to the, in the scale that they need to get deployed, uh, leverage all the uh, infrastructure at the appropriate places. Uh, if failure happens at a certain uh, location, we can run the processing somewhere else or potentially locally. Uh, Dynamic service graphs, uh, and this gets to be kind of, oh, as we get farther along, uh, we want to be able to deploy these applications, some of them on the same site, some of them uh, potentially at a uh, more centralized site. Uh, being able to insert uh, VNFs uh, into a graph uh, transparently uh, and enable the transit through this path uh, and being able to deploy the application uh, wherever it uh, makes sense to deploy. Uh, and then highly available uh, service management. And, Ra? Uh, no, this one will be us, yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is, uh, we just talked about some of the uh, environment. Uh, so we worked with uh, Red Hat and uh, Big Switch and uh, said, let's try and figure out what makes sense to uh, validate some of these uh, issues. Uh, we're concerned about uh, how the uh, control protocols of OpenStack work, uh, how the uh, management of the network uh, will work and whether that's uh, feasible within the constraints we have. Uh, and we're, uh, so we'll, we'll point out what specifically the, some of the functions that we have. There's uh, some latency concerns, there's bandwidth uh, of functions things like logging uh, that does want to be, uh, come back to the central site and so these will kind of limit the functionality. Um, so these are some of the challenges that we see um, uh, in the way we're uh, in, in this, our current environment, how do you extend uh, an L2 segment uh, without necessarily having, having kind of different speeds or in the seg different segments of your network? Uh, and there might be a, a, a local um, uh, top of rack switch for that kind of function uh, that has very good local uh, uh, performance, but the connection of that uh, local switch tour up to uh, a centralized site so you can actually understand the whole topology uh, may have gaps. And then if you want to extend 
uh, a VNF uh, service graph from one location um, to another, you'd have to extend the L2 functionality uh, potentially across this environment. Uh, the OpenStack control plane is kind of one of the big concerns we have of uh, monitoring uh, uh, health indications, uh, making sure that there is uh, availability of all those uh, connections and, and that the, the, having this distributed nature of the function doesn't uh, uh, destroy the, the monitoring capabilities, the visibility environment. Uh, and then service resilience is kind of our uh, environment. We want to be able to uh, run environments uh, in the face of uh, failure modes, uh, failures at the edges, uh, failures at the control nodes, uh, and be resilient in all these places. And then we'll talk about uh, some of the network configuration. How do we maintain it? How to troubleshoot it? Uh, these are all pieces that we need to have a single view of uh, the network, a uh, single view of the environment that we can uh, manage from a, a centralized site uh, and provide uh, visibility into what's going on in the network uh, for all of our, our operational teams. Uh, you want okay. to talk about the setup? Sure. Thanks, Ray. Yeah, so uh, at Big Switch, we tested the following topology in our lab setup. So we had a core data center. I'm not used to looking back, but yeah. Uh, yeah, we had a core data center wherein we had the big cloud fabric controller clusters. This is basically a pair of BCF controllers in uh, active standby mode to give uh, high availability and resiliency. We had uh, spine switches, which were connected to top of rack leaf switches. And then we had a rack of bare metal uh, controllers. Oops. Yeah. Then we had a rack of bare metal servers. Uh, we used a Red Hat uh, director. Uh, to provision as our undercloud to provision the rest of our OpenStack uh, cluster, which includes the OpenStack controllers as well as the compute nodes. On the compute nodes, we had uh, SwitchLite VX running, which is a virtual switch from Big Switch, which is also programmed by our controller. Then we had the remote site wherein we had the top of rack leaf switches. These leaf switches were directly connected to the spine switches in the core data center. And we had compute nodes. These compute nodes are also orchestrated by the same uh, director sitting in the core data center. And then we had a latency generator appliance. This was a homegrown DPTK-based uh, application, which just adds latency for every packet that passes through it. We ensure that every single wire from the core data center to the remote site goes through this specific uh, latency generator to simulate the uh, WAN. So yeah, uh, this is the physical topology of the lab itself. We had the core data center with the BCF controller clusters. We had the spine switches and the leaf switches, both in the core data center and the remote site. And then we had the rack of resources that are running our uh, OpenStack clusters. And then we wired them up, and this forms the data path for our fabric. Our controller uses an out-of-band uh, management network to communicate with all the physical switches. So that is uh, pointed out by the dotted lines here. And uh, to talk to the virtual switches, the controller uses an in-band connection that is highlighted in the orange lines here. Then we added the latency generator right in between, and we ensure that every single wire from the core data center to the remote site passes through it, hence adding latency to every packet. Uh, the objective of the whole test was to validate that the big cloud fabric was resilient, even in the presence of WAN latencies. So Verizon, their metro optical WAN, has a maximum latency of 40 milliseconds from uh, the east coast to the west coast, and that became our magic number here. So the tests were for latencies between 0 and 40 milliseconds, which is an RTT of uh, 80 milliseconds. So uh, the primary focus of all the testing was to validate that, to see how latency affects the control plane. Specifically speaking, uh, we wanted to see how it has an effect on the out-of-band management network that the controller uses to program the physical switches. Also, the in-band network that the controller uses to program the virtual switches and also the OpenStack control plane communications that the agents that are residing on the compute node talk to the controllers, which are in the data center. 
So these are the tests performed. We used a simple ping application to perform a ping from a virtual machine running in the core data center to the virtual machine running in the remote site. And the criteria for success for all the test suits that we ran was that the fabric shouldn't be losing even a single packet. So uh, we started off with the controller failure scenarios. Uh, to begin with, we did the failover, where we forced the active controller to failover so that the standby becomes a new active. We also tested the headless mode, wherein we bring down both the controllers at the same time. But uh, the, the fabric still continues to forward the packets because it doesn't need to have the controllers. But any changes in the network will not reflect a change in the fabric because the controllers are absent altogether. So in this test suit, we didn't see uh, any packet losses at all. Uh, the second set of tests we ran were uh, switch disconnects and reconnects. So every time a leaf switch disconnects from the management network, the controller has to know that, OK, I need to take that leaf out from the fabric. So what he does is that he re uh, reprograms a subset of switches that are affected by the removal of that switch to ensure that the fabric is still fully connected. Uh, the next set of tests were uh, interface up and down. Here, what we do is that we can either do a shut, no shut on specific interface for a given leaf using the controller itself, or you can go to the switch and just yank out the wire. So in this case, also the controller it you know it re, you know reprograms a subset of switches to ensure that the fabric is uh, fully connected and there are no you know holes there. And then uh, the last tests were, that we ran were uh, switch reboots, wherein we would just physically reboot the box itself. This is just an you know, extreme version of the previous tests. Here again, the fabric has to you know, remain resilient and uh, ensure that uh, everything is fully connected. So uh, all in all, what we saw was that during all the tests that we ran, we didn't see a single packet drop in the fabric. And also, when it comes to OpenStack uh, agents, we didn't see any of them timing out as well in this particular test. I'll hand it off to Fred to yep. conclude. Yep. So uh, again, I, I think our uh, in initial concerns was just, can this environment actually work? Uh, and uh, I think there's uh, the, uh, several pieces over here that we uh, have shown uh, do work. Uh, one of the other uh, issues we have is uh, what's the, uh, given the face of uh, various latency issues, uh, network availability, what the various uh, connectivity and uh, failure modes we might encounter, can we actually survive this uh, and, and run this environment uh, long term? And I, I think we've shown at least uh, from a, that it's a feasible function. I think we have uh, certainly more work to do that, uh, to demonstrate uh, scale in this kind of environment. Uh, but from a, a kind of the initial use case uh, uh, validation, we, we've shown that it does work in this environment and that we can uh, run this. And again, I have to thank uh, uh, certainly Red Hat uh, environment has been uh, and this environment uh, and worked. Uh, and Big Switch has provided us uh, uh, all the network functionality and then that uh, has worked as well. And I think that's our last slide, yes. Um, any questions? Nope, oh, we got one. Uh, question for Big Switch. You mentioned in the core data center, the big cloud fabric is extended out to a remote site, the leaf in the remote site. How many of those remote site leafs could you actually support as part of the big cloud fabric in the core data center? Uh, so, uh, that's a question. so uh, today, the way we have is that we have a class architecture in which we have six pines and support up to 16 racks. So that should, I mean, so in effect, the single fabric can support up to 16 uh, racks. So it doesn't matter on the distribution. We have, we, the way we tested it was just a single rack within the data center and a rack in the remote site. But uh, we don't see that as a limiting factor. OK. Let me rephrase the question. If you already have 16 leaf switches in the core data center. Right. How many remote leaf switches can I have? Am so, I already maxed out? <laughs> no. Uh, so 16 r leaf switches would come up to eight pods, right? Because on each rack, you would have two top of rack switches. Okay. So in that case, you can have eight in the data center and eight in your remote site. Or rather, eight remote uh, sites with a single rack each. OK, but 16 Overall, is 32 max. Switches. Yeah, exactly. Yes. OK, thank you. Hi. 
Yeah, I'm interested in your choice of uh, a simple ping test between VMs to verify this, because at one level, we just seem to be establishing basic network connectivity continues, mm -hmm. rather than actually testing that the open control, open stack control plane itself continues to function. You know, can Neutron create networks under those latency conditions? Can um, Nova spin up VMs? Did you, did you look at that? Uh, that's uh, our next phase, essentially. We do want to run an actual application, so not even just you know, trying to uh, spin up a VM, set up your networking, uh, you know, deploy an application, uh, full, you know, functioning application, something like a web streamer, uh, video streamer, something like that. It's just that we ran out of time. No. No, I think I just want to add, I think one of the other uh, successive issues is how do you do a, uh, a real service graph where you're crossing potentially this boundary that has very high latency or uh, potentially very narrow pipe uh, how do you distribute the uh, uh, environment, uh, VNFs across that uh, path, uh, and have the knowledge of where to distribute it? I think. So again, we have lots more work to do in uh, the future. Yeah, because I remember, I think it was BT, um, about a year or so ago, where um, did an analysis of more or less precisely this kind of architecture and concluded that there was quite a lot of, of, of issues with using OpenStack to do this. Mm -hmm really in the control plane, so things like mm -hmm. the scalability of NOVA, the sensitivity yeah. of NOVA to latency and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's one of the main concerns and one of the reasons why we're looking at this, because uh, there are issues with the message bus that uh, might potentially pop up, you know, your database access, uh, etc., your ability to communicate to your uh, Nova computes, um, your, basically your control plane, uh, how can it function? Because, you know, data plane is going to be uh, remote and distributed, so you expect it to work, but, you know, that type of communication is a problem, especially if you don't want, um, the cells are not ready uh, for consumption in this type of environment. Potentially they can solve uh, any issue with distributing your uh, compute nodes to the edges. But if you're not using cells, um, what is uh, you know, the feasibility of that type of architecture? So uh, yeah, we definitely realize that we need to do a lot more work. Plus, as you saw, it's only tested with one remote site. Potentially, we want to be able to do 10,000 and more right, remote sites because the idea, especially for things like virtual CPE, is to be able to deploy to you know uh, have like one or two data centers that manage the whole huge region like United States for instance or EMEA or you know large countries uh, and large regions so you don't want to be able to only run you know few of those you want to have tens of thousands potential remote sites. Mm -hmm. Yeah, somehow related to the previous question. Well, I saw the posting of Jay Pipes recently on OpenStack Dev, and where he expressed some concerns for VCP in OpenStack-based clouds. Maybe you saw it. I advise you yeah. maybe to look. In regards of that, that is about resource requirements that you are kind of figured out when it comes to Nova Compute. Have you come up with something minimum that you said, okay, that is the minimum number of CPU and RAM that we will have as our compute hosts. Or yeah, maybe you haven't figured it out. Well, that, I, so uh, we, we have minimums in, in uh, kind of what, what we want to deploy. Uh, and kind of our, our kind of virtual, our CPE, our thin CPE environment is in the order of uh, one atom CPU. Uh, and so that, that gets to be uh, extremely small. Uh, and uh, can the limitations on that will be interesting. And I, I, it, it's the overhead of running even the compute services uh, might overrun the uh, capacity of the RAM in, in this kind of environment. Uh, but again, I, I think those are limits that we need to explore some more. Yeah, we've, we've done internally some of the work that you're talking about, uh, analyzing how many CPUs have been consumed by running NOVA compute and then uh, with addition of each uh, VM, you know, what uh, gets consumed, especially uh, in some of the uh, applications, you might want to be running uh, things like DPDK. Uh, that's going to consume even more of your CPU resources. Um, unfortunately, I can't really share the data. It's internal stuff. Uh, at some point, we might, you know, yeah. uh, publish it. 
Um, it's a different group. <laughs> Uh, it's their decision, essentially. But yes, we, we are doing that sort of analysis. We have that in mind. We realize that it might be a problem. We, uh, we've had discussions about you know, how to minimize the type of footprint, what other options for deploying remote uh, virtual CP um, without actually you know, completely getting rid of OpenStack, because we think OpenStack adds a lot of value. Uh, in terms of the type of orchestration you can do in, type, in terms of having a homogeneous type of environment to manage. Uh, you know, one way of deploying your VMs, whether it's internally in your core data center or remotely in your, uh, you know, geographically distributed sites. So we still want to keep that type of uh, value without, you know, using all your resources just to run your Nova compute. Anything else? No. Thank well, you, everybody, for coming. Thanks for coming. And uh, if you have any other questions afterwards, feel free to uh, yeah. come talk to us or uh, reach out uh, to me personally. I don't know about yeah, the other guys, but you can, you can very easily find me. I'm the only Rima Eontel in the whole world. So if you Google me, <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> that's going to be me. <laughs> yeah. right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.